Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin and Ethereum have been performing well in 2020 so far. In this video, I will explain what is a better investment, one full Bitcoin or 30 ETH. And yes, it's 30 ETH, not 32. Apparently, not everyone can do first grade math. Just want to say thank you for Cobo Vault for sending me this hardware cryptocurrency wallet. The Cobo Vault is one of the more premium wallets available on the market today, which is reflected on its build quality. The device has a nice and heavy feel to it. The Cobo Vault features a host of premium securities. This includes open sourcing its software, disabling wireless connection to the wallet, and closing it its military grade case that is both water and shock proof and detachable and self-charging battery. Cobo Vault starts at $99. If you use my link in the description box below, you will get 5% off. This is not all, they also sent me a Kobo Tablet Plus where you can store your recovery seeds. With collaboration with Kobo Vault, we will be giving away 3 of these Kobo Tablets to you guys. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video and follow me on Instagram. And I will choose 3 winners on my Instagram. Let's take a look at the cryptocurrency market and see where we stand. But before we start, please hit that like button, it helps out a lot. And let's keep reporting those annoying cryptocurrency scammers in the comment section below. If you look at the Bitcoin, the BTC price is slightly correcting. The current price as of the time of this recording is at around $11,300 or so. By the time you're watching this, the price could change, it can be lower or higher. It looks like Bitcoin might pull back a bit from this point and we will see if there is going to be another consolidation like we have seen in the beginning of the summer or if we will see wild up and down swings. If you look at the year to date, Bitcoin is still performing well relatively to other asset classes. At the beginning of January 2020, Bitcoin was trading at around $7,200 and now it's over $11,300, that's over $4,000 gains or if we convert into percentage, that would be 57% increase year to date. Now let's take a look at Ethereum. All cryptocurrencies right now, including ETH, have been in the red for the past few days. The current price of ETH is slightly under $400 a coin. Ethereum recently reached 2 years high, last time it was at $400 back in August 2018, when ETH was crashing down in this devastating 2018 bear market. In 2020, ETH is performing phenomenal. In the beginning of the year, in January 1st, one ETH price was around $127 a coin. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out that ETH performs much better than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin performs much better than any other asset classes outside of cryptocurrencies. Ethereum gained over $270 a coin or 214% year to date. Sure, we know that ETH is better performing asset in 2020 than Bitcoin. But the real question is if it will continue to perform better than Bitcoin in foreseeable future. If you look at this chart, it represents Bitcoin price dominance comparing to other cryptocurrencies. We will notice that BTC dominance is decreasing while ETH dominance is slightly increasing. It looks like ETH is eating more and more shares of the entire cryptocurrency pie. Back in 2017, Bitcoin had over 85% dominance in the entire cryptocurrency market. Then, when that crazy bull market started, things changed from 0 to 100 real quick. Bitcoin's dominance dropped till 37% while ETH dominance increased till 31%. This was the only time when ETH came so close to flip BTC, but that didn't happen. And when we entered into the bear market, Bitcoin started to regain its crown while the Ethereum dominance decreased. Now Bitcoin's dominance is at 59%, while ETH increased till 12%. Also very interesting, if you look at the bigger picture, since 2013, Bitcoin starts to lose its dominance power and it looks like this long-lasting trend will continue to persist into the future. But what is the biggest cryptocurrency in the market besides Bitcoin right now? Of course it's ETH. 
So we can come to conclusion that over a long run, these two dominant power will converge one more time, which means ETH is likely to outperform Bitcoin in price action. Also, if you look at this chart, it represents ETH to BTC ratio. If you do not know what it means, we simply take price of ETH and divide that number by price of Bitcoin. That is $385 divided by $11,300 and we get 0.034, which means ETH price takes only 3.4% of entire Bitcoin. At the peak of 2017 bull market, ETH took as much as 12% of 1 BTC. It looks like the trend of ETH to BTC ratio is likely to increase. So currently you have a choice. You can buy 1 Bitcoin for $11,300 or you can buy approximately 30 ETH for $380 each. Which one would I choose I will answer later in this video. But in meanwhile, let's take a look what Bitcoin Jesus Andreas Antonopoulos has to say about Bitcoin versus Ethereum debates. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'd have to speculate on their state of mind, but I'll, I'll try my best. I think it's important because it's a framing assumption that drives the interest in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin from the beginning uh, was defined by its fixed uh, and immutable supply of no more, uh, not even up to 21 million coins and a fixed issuance schedule that is um, set in stone or rather set on the blockchain, which is even stronger, and will not change. It's, um, it's also one of the key characteristics because Bitcoin is first and foremost money. And uh, in fact, it's money of a particular kind. It's hard money or sound money. And um, that drives a lot of its appeal, especially uh, within some groups um, who are interested in it with a very um, specific Austrian economics ideological interest. To, just to clarify, because I think this point has been lost, um, Ethereum supply is validated every block and it's validated according to the consensus rules and everybody who runs an Ethereum node, um, their node validates the supply. There's no difference in that fundamental mechanic from Bitcoin's fundamental consensus rules with regards to validation of supply. The difference is that because of a variety of factors um, that are different in Bitcoin than in Ethereum. In Bitcoin, there is a specific API method. You can ask your node to give you the current sum. Uh, and in Ethereum, it's not so easy to do that. That doesn't mean there is no sum. That doesn't mean that the sum isn't validated or part of the consensus rules. It just seems that it just means that that's not an easily accessible answer. And depending on how you write the script that comes up with the answer and the methodology you use, you might come up with some slightly differing answers. The first one is that uh, Bitcoin doesn't use a double entry bookkeeping account balance system. Instead, it uses a system that's more like um, tracking um, fixed amount coins through the system. And these are called unspent transaction outputs. And at any moment in time, it keeps a database of the current unspent transaction outputs. And so it's, it's very easy to just sum them up. Um, so the, the current state of the unspent transaction output database is easy to access. Ethereum doesn't use um, fixed amount coins, um, indivisible chunks of currency as Bitcoin does. Instead, it uses a system of accounts. These accounts have credits and debits. These credits and debits are reconciled as part of consensus and have to add up. But in order to figure out what the exact balance of any account is, or to sum the balance of all the accounts, you have to go back to the Genesis block, and then you just have to run through the pluses and minuses until you arrive at an answer. And so that takes more work. It, it takes even more work because of some historic anomalies in the um, Ethereum blockchain. There's a period where... Um, validating the state takes a, a significant amount of computation due to a bug that allowed a denial of service attack. That's not neither here nor there. You can't validate it. It just takes more time. And so once you add up all of these numbers, you can get an answer. However, that answer changes every 15 seconds because Bitcoin 
has 40 blocks in the same time, uh, sorry, Ethereum has Ethereum. 40 blocks in the same time that Bitcoin has one. I think Ethereum um, has been migrating towards proof of stake for a very long time. And that's one of the reasons why criticizing this proof of work system doesn't really make sense because, you know, it's just an interim system. Um, I don't know whether proof of stake really makes Ethereum better money. Uh, I still think that some of the design trade-offs required to run a smart contracts platform that make Ether a utility token for the explicit purpose of being used as gas to meter the execution of smart contracts, all of these things involve some pretty fundamental design trade-offs, which in my mind don't make Ethereum uh, primarily sound money. Uh, it can have the function of money also, just like gasoline can. Yeah, sure, you primarily use it to put it in your car, but you could build an underground thousand gallon tank and use that to barter in the apocalypse. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the, that we doesn't are mean in the apocalypse, right. or, or it might be. <laughs> and, and some people are, I'm sure, are hoarding gas or beans. Um, that doesn't make those things money, um, even though they have value. So. And again, you know, I have this. I have a similar and opposite impression of Bitcoin, which is that Bitcoin isn't a good platform for smart contracts, and that's a good thing because it was never meant to be, and shouldn't try to be, um, because everything that it does to be sound money um, kind of undermines its ability to be a smart contracts platform, and vice versa. And these compromises serve a purpose. Um, these trade-offs serve a purpose. I've talked about this extensively in a video I call The Lion and the Shark, where I describe um, these types of divergent evolution, where you have a cryptocurrency or blockchain that is an apex predator within its own domain of applications, just like the lion is an apex predator in the savannah, and the shark is an apex predator of the ocean, and kind of comparing them or trying to apply the framing assumptions of one on the other doesn't make sense. Um, so to give you to take that analogy a bit further, criticizing Ethereum for um, its total supply is a bit like the um, denizens of the savannah saying, "Well, shark, you you don't have sharp claws and four paws, so you can't run and catch gazelles." And we all know that catching gazelles is the most important thing in the savannah. Um, you know, sure, it's it's a valid argument if that's what you're trying to do, but. That's not what the shark is trying to do. And it doesn't make sense to criticize the shark for not having claws any more than it, it makes sense to criticize the lion for looking really ridiculous when it's trying to swim in the ocean. Um, these are not systems that compete directly against each other, and not because they're weak, but because their strength lies in specialization that adapts them for one purpose, while simultaneously maladapting them for other purposes. And that's a good thing. We need specialization. Um, so, you know, that's why I think it's, it's all a, a, a silly argument. And you, you can go on forever down that path. Um, but the bottom line is they're not really competing. We know that Bitcoin has fixed supply. There won't be more than 21 million Bitcoins ever. Every four years, Bitcoin's inflationary supply drops in half. Just recently in May, we had Bitcoin having where BTC mining reward dropped from 12.5 BTC till 6.25 BTC per block. So it has very appealing mathematical algorithm with a fixed supply that essentially makes Bitcoin a sound money. No one can change the algorithm to inflate BTC in circulation. No one can print more Bitcoin just like Fed does with our currency and no one can stop Bitcoin from running its network. This is why lots of libertarians choosing Bitcoin over a central control of federal government that proved over and over again throughout the history that our currency is not sound money. With Ethereum is different. I saw many comments in the section below whenever I make video about ETH, many viewers say something like that, I wish ETH would have a hard cap supply. And I disagree with that statement. In fact, I agreed with Andreas Antonopoulos who says that comparing Bitcoin to Ethereum is like comparing apples to oranges. It doesn't make too much sense doing so. ETH is not trying to be south money just like Bitcoin or even gold. ETH main objection is to be the platform where developers can build decentralized applications and execute smart contracts. 
to do so in a high volume, its age needs to be scalable. For any platform to be scalable, it has to have slight inflation built into the network. It's very similar to modern monetary theory. They print money and they are able to scale the economy. As long as they control the currency supply and do not print too much, the economy will likely to scale as well. I would argue that we won't be where we are today if we were at the gold standard. If we would have gold as a reserve currency today, we would be in deflationary environment. Not many people would want to spend gold. If there is no spending, there would be no consumption. If there is no consumption, there would be no economic growth. More than 70% of US GDP is driven by consumption. Similar argument we can make with Ethereum. If we want to have scalable network, we need to have slight inflation. As simple as that. And I do not want to hear that bullshit anymore, that ETH should have hard cap supply. Going back to the question, what would I choose? 1 Bitcoin or 30 ETH? If someone would put a gun to my head, I would choose 30 ETH. Because I believe ETH will outperform Bitcoin in any bull market. If you are an old grandpa that wants to retire comfortably, I would recommend choosing Bitcoin, since Bitcoin is more safer investment than Ethereum. But if I can choose freely, why not to choose both? Apples are good, oranges are good, but apples and oranges are even better. Bitcoin and Ethereum have different functions, so it's better to own both. If you have $11,300 that you are desperately want to invest in cryptocurrency and you do not know what to choose 1 Bitcoin and 30 ETH, I would spend $6,800 buying Bitcoin and the remaining $4,500 buying ETH. That would be 60-40 split. Let me know what do you guys think, what would perform better, 1 Bitcoin or 30 ETH? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe.